On the way up to the peak, Link finds that the volcano is erupting, so he equips the Hylian shield to prevent himself from getting rained on by boulders. At the top, we find Kipora Gebora perched on top of a sign, and to the left we find a bombable wall, which leads us directly to the Great Fairy. On the floor right in front of the fountain is the royal family's crest, signaling that we must play their song. We are greeted by Polygon Tits. I mean, the Great Fairy of Power. She grants us with the magic meter, which she calls a sword technique. She is referring to the spin attack, which deals energy damage to enemies. After gifting Link with this new power, she tells him about her friend near Hyrule Castle and the power she would grant him. before shrinking down into the fountain again. When you talk to Kebora Gebora, he will give Link a shortcut back to Kakariko Village via Skylift. The Great Fairy of Magic near Hyrule Castle will grant Link with Finn's Fire. Keep in mind that this is an important technique that will be used much later in the game. Before we proceed to the location of the next Spiritual Stone, let's head to Long Long Ranch, because there are a couple things there that we can get. Here at Lon Lon Ranch, head inside on the left building, and we will find Lazy Bum Talon resting surrounded by Kukos. Instead of working, he invites Link to play a game called Super Kukos. Only after beating the game will we receive the second bottle. Go back outside to the middle of the horse corral. There, you will meet Malin singing her heart out for her favorite foal, Epona. Talk to her a few more times until she invites you to sing along with her. For this part, you pull out the ocarina and are immediately prompted to play Epona's song. Take a listen. Epona has now grown fond of Link. Remember this song for later if you want to travel across Hyrule Field quicker than usual. The location for the final spiritual stone can be accessed by going upstream from Zora's River. Kepora Kepora will inform Link of Zora's domain, which is blocked off by a waterfall mechanism. He tells Link that only someone with a connection to the Hyrule royal family can open the door. Before we proceed, there's a guy over here who sells magic beans. You can get a total of 10 from him, and the price goes up by 10 rupees for every purchase. Plant a magic bean into the dirt pile and it will grow into a sapling. Remember that for later. Is that pretty neat? Now we play the melody of the royal family to part the water that's falling down. Get ready to listen to some tropical music the likes of which has never been heard before 1998. This music has soothed me ever since I was a kid. Going into the chamber of King Zora, we find that his daughter, Princess Ruto, has gone missing. Head straight to the left of the chamber to play a mandatory diving minigame. Only when you complete it will you receive the silver scale. 
You need this to dive into deeper depths to obtain the next quest item. A letter in a bottle. Go back to King Zora to show him the letter, and he will let you pass. But not before slowly moving out of the way, which takes about a week. 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 Before seeing Lord Jabu Jabu, come back down to the bottom of Zora's domain to scoop up a fish into a bottle. This will be used as a sacrifice to appease the guardian whale fish thing. We will need a sacrifice! At Zora's fountain, come over here and you will find a secret great fairy fountain. This is another great fairy of magic who will grant Link Aurora's Wind, a teleportation spell for dungeons only. Inside Lord Jabu Jabu's belly, we will find Princess Ruto, who explains to Link that she lost her precious stone and doesn't intend to leave without it. Talk to her a couple more times and she gives you the honor of carrying her. She's basically like this throughout the entire dungeon, so let's get to the next important part. In this dungeon, if you want to call it one, we obtain the boomerang. It can be used to obtain items over long distance, and it is the only thing that can defeat electrified enemies and the parasitic tentacle. Ruto becomes ecstatic when she finds the Zoro Sapphire perched on top of the platform, and tells Link to throw her up there. When he does, she tells him about how she lost it, and that she would like to return to Zoro's domain. Before Link can acknowledge this request, she is taken away by the mini-boss in the dungeon. If done correctly, you can time it so that the giant Octorok has been turned around. Use the boomerang to freeze it and hit its weak spot three times. Nothing important happens between now and the boss of the dungeon, so let's skip to that part. Baronade is the first multi-phase boss in the game. Just follow these instructions and you should be good to go. The first phase, you separate the tendrils from the ceiling using the boomerang. Second phase, the jellyfish serve navigate around Baronade. Use the boomerang to knock the electric tendrils or slash the main body. Third phase, Baronade becomes a merry go round Time it just right to eliminate the jellyfish. Finally, Baronade goes around like a pinball. Avoid the electric transmitters and use the boomerang on the main body. You will have to rinse and repeat a few times before the an enemy is defeated. At the warp out point, we find that Ruto has been watching us the whole time. Judging by the blushing, she has developed a tsundere crush on Link. <laughs> Keep in mind, almost every girl in this game wants Link in some form or another. Ruto, for example, has the audacity to move closer to him when he isn't paying attention, catching him by surprise. She proceeds to ask Link what he desires, to which he responds with a resounding, I want that spiritual stone. Ruto states that her mother once told her to give the stone to the man who will be her husband, after which she swims away in dramatic fashion to give him the Zora Sapphire. As the screen fades to black, she whispers to Link not to tell her father, implying that she will want to someday marry him. If you talk to her again, she teases Link by asking him if her most precious position helped him. On the way back to Hyrule Castle, Link finds the drawbridge to Hyrule Castle Town has been raised. The reason for this is because the country is in a state of emergency after Ganondorf's betrayal of the king. Speaking of him, he is pursuing Zelda and Impa on horseback. Out of frustration, he summons an energy ball that hits Link like a scene out of Dragon Ball Z.
and he just gallops away in frustration. Remember that Zelda threw something that landed in the moat. Collect that and we are given a cutscene on what happened to Zelda before she retreated with Impa into hiding. She explains to Link that she couldn't delay any longer, and teaches him a new melody. Take a listen to this song. Her final message tells us to play the melody in the Temple of Time, and that she trusts Link to protect the Triforce. Like any good video game hero, we do as instructed. When we play the Song of Time, the three spiritual stones appear above the altar to open the Door of Time. This reveals the Master Sword, which when pulled warps Link to the Sacred Realm. he was being followed. Ganondorf knew that Link held the keys to the Sacred Realm, which led him directly to the Triforce. He gives a menacing laugh before the screen fades. I'm glad you took time to watch this video. For more content like this, leave a like, comment, or subscribe to the channel. I'll be leaving my spaceship. So, I hope to see you all on the Paradise Planet.